watching DCGS News with Elliot and Ollie. As another busy term at Challoners comes to an end, it's time for us to take a look at what's been going on across the school. Challoners made waves in the fashion industry this year after landing a place in Tatler's magazine Best State Schools 2017 feature. As well as mentioning our dazzling results, the magazine described the school's extracurricular activities as A grade, which we were pleased to see recognition for. Additionally, we were pleased to have a visit from the UK Electronic Skills Foundation this term. I'm very happy when they suggested afterwards that we might be the leading secondary school for electronics in the UK. Speaking of leading secondary schools, the annual university match against the high school took place in January. We had some strong contenders on our side, including powerhouses Maddox Bird and Ben Watson in Key Stage 3, standout performer Fraser Barnes in Year 10, and in sixth form, Dom Storey and Dennis Mikhailov who between them rarely found anything they couldn't answer. In the end, DCGS took home the trophy. We look forward to taking the girls on again next year. In our main news, we rounded off 2016 with the cricket tour to India. For our cricketers, eyes were opened for the whole of the trip. It was a fantastically insightful week of visits, including working with school children in a charity school and a tour of a Sikh temple and community kitchen. It was punctuated by some great cricket too. With the whole team playing brilliantly throughout, the boys made the long journey to Jaipur, stopping at the Taj Mahal on the way. It's clear why it's considered one of the seven modern wonders of the world. Once in Jaipur, the team took in the City Palace and Amber Fort, before taking to the pitch once again with another pair of excellent performances, concluding the tour, allowing the team's record to stand at three wins out of four. In all, the cricket tour was a fantastic trip, providing a huge array of memories of a spectacular country to all involved. This half term also brought with it our famous annual speaking contest, Channelers Speaks, during which students from years seven to 10 take on the challenge to write, rehearse and perform a short speech for a chance to make it to the grand finals for each year group. This year's topic, Fire in My Belly, made for a truly heated competition with speeches ranging from outrage at climate change to passion for social media. But only the best could succeed. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from 2017's most eloquent or or orators. Swimming is something that needs passion. And to reach Paralympic level by the age of 13 is a true feat. Ellie Simmons, a Paralympic swimmer for Great Britain, achieved this wonder because she had passion. How many of you have effortlessly turned on a tap today to receive some clean drinking water? Yep, raise those hands. How many of you have enjoyed the luxury of a shower or a bath in the last couple of days? Okay. And, well, how many of you sleep every night knowing that you won't have to walk miles on end the next day just to survive? Imagine you're a fish with a choice of two ponds. The first one is full of fresh, clean water, lots of nutrients and plenty of things to enjoy. The other one, however, is not maintained nearly as much. The water has become murky and unhealthy. There is very little around and there is no way of getting between the two worlds easily, if at all. If we don't want the world to end anytime soon, we need to build more eco-cities. Eco-cities are the future which we need to embrace now. There have been religious wars for 3,000 years and the, and the argument has always been, believe as we believe or we will kill you. I'd always thought that idiom was about as much use as a chocolate teapot in conveying any originality of thought. And yet here we are with an idiom for our title, Fire in My Belly. But with the zeal of the convert, I girded my loins, grasped the nettle and dived in. <laughs> an explosion of endorphins cascading into each other like dynamite, a cacophony of fireworks, the full spectrum of the rainbow as pinks and reds merge with blues and greens until a bleeding neon blur fills my mind, a roller coaster rush of energy, surging violently through my veins, throbbing and pulsating until everything collides, moving towards a singular apex. And a group of our year 12 students have finished the term by hosting a quiz night, raising money to fund their visit to Namibia in the summer. We have Ed and Sophia in the studio today to tell us more about what happened. Ed, Sophia, thank you for joining us. From what we hear, your quiz night was very successful. How much did you raise in total? So in total we raised uh, 2,500, that's how much profit we got. Um, on the night, the bar and the raffle were really successful, so we got £1,800 from that. 
um, and then split between five of us, that means the profit is 500 each. So that must have taken a lot of organisation. What, what goes on behind the scenes to running an event like this? So there's the venue to organise first of all, so the school hall, and then also there's things like the fish and chip dinner, uh, the bar that we had to organise, and also the quiz master to make sure we had someone to deliver the quiz. Yeah. And so uh, this is for your trip to Namibia. Uh, how many of you will be going and what will you be doing there? So there's around 20 of us going with school. Uh, we're going in two groups. We're flying to the capital Windhoek to start with, before we travel north to the Waterberg Plateau. Uh, from there we go to Africat, which is a wildlife conservation charity in Africa. And then we go to Atosha National Park, the largest uh, in Namibia. And then from there we head over to the coastline. Yeah, so then we're travelling down the skeleton coast. Uh, we'll be kayaking with dolphins, things like that. Uh, we've got some, going to be a visit some sand dunes in the Namib Desert and then we're back to Windhoek and flying home. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming along. We'll end our report with a look at the house competition as well, as Chandler speaks. We shall Pearson take the lead in two rounds and Fox will hold a steady second place most of the way through. This half term, students have also taken part in house hockey and house basketball. House hockey will conclude next half term but so far has largely been a good event for Newman teams. While Foxland Thorn have had strong performances in the hockey, with Pearson following close behind. The overall scores at the close of the half term see Foxland on the lead, with Thorn, Pearson and Newman close on their heels. Rainer and Holman have a bit of a way to go, but with half a year left, there's plenty of time to catch up. You can do it, guys. Yeah, come on, Rainer. Anyway, that's all from us this half term. Enjoy the holiday and thank you for watching.